guys, welcome back to another episode with just burning it. Guys, this week episode is about how we can try and save you some money. So let's jump straight into it. Brought to you by iCheck TPMS. This week we're going to share our experience on how much money we have wasted over the three and a half years of travel on the road. We have thrown out how much? Oh, possibly it's possibly been thousands. Like it's we haven't really got a figure, but you most probably could gauge about on what we've thrown out and, and why it's cost us so much money. So this episode is just to let you know and possibly you can take some tips out of this um, about what we've done, what we've thrown out and what works for us. Now, we know not everything that we do is gonna suit your needs, etc. but this is just how we do it. We get a lot of questions about this um, and we thought we'd make this episode we've also Sue's also we've got heaps of stuff to show you um, if we don't have the stuff we've obviously thrown out I'm going through my phone and I'm trying to grab some photos so you'll see them pop up on the um, screen also all the stuff that we've bought I'm pretty sure we've paid for our own money so it's not like we're trying to sell you anything in this episode nah. we're just trying to just let you know what we we packed when we first left and what we now have in our caravan and that's exactly it. So it's taken us some time to sort of work out what works for us. Works for us won't necessarily work for you um, because it also depends on personal preferences. It depends on if you travel full time, if you only travel on weekends, your needs will be different. And it also depends on how many people you're traveling with and on your budget. Um, so you'll see we'll pull out a table shortly and look definitely not a six person family table but if you're a couple traveling it'll work etc so let's get into it um the table the table so and you want me to talk yeah so we set off <laughs> we had this we, we had this bunnings table we bought actually for the house um it's a one of those big fold tables that did fold in half and i said to sue all oh, you know we've got a table so we took it along with us and it was lying, it was next to the bed, it was on the bed. Is it in the walkway? In the walkway, oh, it was everywhere. And um, when we used to pull up to a rest area for Sue to work, um, everything had to come out the caravan <laughs> so we could gain extra access into the caravan. Table didn't fit in the tunnel boots um, in that caravan that we had, our first caravan, and it surely didn't fit in the back of the caravan, oh, the back of the ute. How so, big was it? So you must probably think how big this table is. He has a photo. You, must put, you pass them at Bunnings all the time. They've, they still sell it. That was, and I looked at soon. and I said, there's got to be another, we, we, we're not, you know, we, we're not, we don't have a family, fair enough, but we bought this little guy. Where is it? Here's a little something I prepared earlier. Look at this cute little thing we got. So this opens up, it folds out. It's got four little legs inside that screw on. Now look, it, 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 it was probably... Oh, are you doing a practical? Yeah. Oh, see? And then you screw these on, not adjustable legs. So this is the height it is. You pull it up, you screw them in, and then you lock it and the table comes out. We use this next to the fire. We use it outside to put some snacks on and stuff. It works great. Now- and One can sit on each side to eat their dinner oh, as well. I don't We've know. done that on a hot day, but Yeah, before. actually we have, yes. So it just folds like that. It's pretty light. Now, it's made by Outdoor Connection. We purchased it at a, at a caravan shop somewhere. I can't remember. We were there. There was a caravan show. We went in and, and we saw them. So we purchased it. I think I paid 60 bucks for this little table. Now, I've just been onto their website and I don't see the exact same one. They've got one on there that doesn't fold, but it also collapses and the legs clip in at the back. So, yeah, I don't know. You can actually scrounge the internet and you can maybe possibly find um, one of these and that's what we use now. So the big table's long gone. And tables lead to chairs. Oh. Um, we have spoken about the chairs earlier um, in a previous episode. We left with, um, what are they called? 
They were, they were from BCF, they're a Wanderer reclining chair. Wonder, a Wanderer, I think the brand name was. Yep. Uh, we'll try and go down and find the exact one, but I'll put something on the screen very similar. We had them before we left and... Um, very comfortable. Mate, they were comfortable. Um, Sophie loved them. Um, but same thing, it was about where do we pack them? We packed them on the bed. And then when we stopped somewhere, they had to go outside. If it rained... Well, they were just outside in the rain because well, we needed to sleep. <laughs> um, you know, some people do have them and they, they somehow work around it. That's good on them. We currently now have the... Navigator folding chairs that fold yep. about this big. Bob is out. Yeah, sorry about that. Bob is on... Hopefully you'll calm down a minute. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, the Navigator chairs. Look, they're comfortable enough for us to sit on. They are, I think they're 130 bucks. Uh, ours have lasted us over a year now, and they, they, they sit in the sun and stuff. So, you know, they we do find that the legs sometimes can be quite tight. I just put a little bit of Q20 on them every so month, and they slide up and down perfectly, and they fit in the hatch at the back of the caravan, which is perfect. It's so nice and narrow, actually. That's the good thing about yep. them when they pack up. I'm going to bring up a hot, contentious topic, because I know What's that... that? everyone has different opinions on this we're going to talk about privacy screens oh, so we've had oh. them we've not had them yes you want me to talk yeah oh. <laughs> so, so um sorry we've um we've got a bit of feedback on our over talk over sue and we are really trying to do this but it's really hard because we can't and if you really want to know, we um, this is how we actually are in normal life. The day, day in normal life, like people hopefully you tell you that have met us, that we kind of just sort of over talk each other, which is pretty bad, but that's just who we are. Um, privacy screens. We had them. We actually bought them when we stopped and worked at Gawler because we were there for five months. So we had the awning properly out all the time we had the anti-flap kit and we put them to create sort of like an annex area because we didn't want to buy an annex um, because that's something we definitely won't be traveling with because we're not in an area for more than two three four days and then you're sort of moving on but what we find with the with the awning is i generally put the awning away at night now especially in in wa where we are the wind just picks up every night and if I've got the awning out, I just don't sleep because there's, you know, you would have seen um, our when our episode, I think it was last week or the week before, that the awning, you know, got damaged. And there's a few people on the road that we know that had has had their, like, just some big random wind picks up and ripped their awning off and you, they, they just cut it off and just threw it in the bin. And it's been happening a lot lately. We got the, the weather app and it says it's going to be an awesome evening and about like 10 o'clock at night it is blowing a gale and they'll just pick up the awning. But So we actually put the awning away and then just out when we need it. So having the privacy screens are not really good to us because for what we do, two, three days, move on, you know, we don't, we don't need them and it's just extra space and look, they don't weigh a lot but it all adds up. So yeah. we don't actually travel with um, privacy screens. And that's a very personal thing because I know that they're awesome. They're exactly what they say, they're for privacy. Mm. So if you're looking for privacy and if you're looking to break, you know, a small breeze of wind, they're great. Um, so not saying they're not great, just saying they didn't work for yeah, us. Yeah, just don't work for us. Like yeah. we're currently parked up in, where are we? We Yardie, are Yardie Yardie Homestead. Homestead. And I tell you what, is I know we go on about it, but man, it blew <laughs> last night and it blew today. Again, the, the episode's inside. And a lot of people have got their privacy screens out, but I, can, I, I would say they're here for a week or two through the school holidays. That's a different story. Like I would, I would take it if I was going to be somewhere for two, three, four weeks. But most people this morning, awnings were in. So if you had the privacy screens in, you'd have to up in the up in the middle of the night trying and pull them so anyway that's just yeah the next is the fire pit now this we got a lot of questions on the fire pit in the last few episodes um so we love our fire pit it is a i don't know, I don't know the brand but we we got it from bcf bcf yeah 
it's light, it does the job. We've we, we, we even you we even have cooked within the camp oven in it so it holds up. I'll put a little picture on the screen here. Um, I think they were like $170 when you get them on a club plot price. I think you can get a little bit cheaper. The little mesh pod is replaceable. Um, you can buy them from BCF. So we um, have had it that it burned through. Um, it was actually chicken fat that it burned and it just burned through it. Then we just, I actually turfed it out and we bought a, a, a we got another fire pit that was just too heavy. And we actually gone back to that one. We only just bought it in um, blah, 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 Geraldton. Yeah. And it's aluminium, so and it's very light. Yeah, and it folds up to about this long. Yep. And about that thick. Yeah, and it actually fits in the bag that it comes with. Yeah, absolutely. And um, the next thing we'll talk about is the washing line. Um, yes, so we left home with one of those collapsible fold-away washing yeah. lines. Um, you can also put a picture of that up in the corner. Yeah, somewhere. <laughs> one there. of those. Yeah. Um, and we found that. To be honest, I, I was taking it out because I think that was also stored in the caravan, maybe on the bed. <laughs> there was a lot stored on the bed, um, but I found I just wasn't putting it up to use it. So <clears throat> we'll show you why I wasn't putting it up to use it. Derek actually made a washing line, didn't you? Well, I just did the one on the awning and then actually we carry, now there's you know, we always go on about something that serves two purposes. So Bobby's got a little run lead that I bought, it. like it's just a I don't know, 10 or 15 or 20 meter rope with a with an R hook that runs on top of it. So when we go sort of free camping, I run the line out to a tree or to my ute, and then he can run on that lead, and he's still on his lead. And um, we actually just pull that out now, and I'll just hang my washing on that, and then put it away when I'm done. So good old fashioned rope. Imagine yep. that. Um, all right, we have mentioned previously as well about the ground sheet. So originally we just bought a stock standard ground sheet, I think from BCF. 100 bucks or something. Yep, and we just found that it just wasn't working for us. Well, it's, when you go onto the beach is where you find the drama. Like I think if you're out, if you're in sort of caravan parks or sort of places like that it's going to do the job but the sand when we were on Paluby beach it just the sand just collected on top of it yeah they had nowhere for it to go and then we on a black friday special we bought the sea gear Ooh. one um it's not very big i think it's like five by three meters or something it's not the very because we didn't have a very big van and yeah chalk and cheese you know the old saying poor man plays twice and yeah it's just yeah, if, so it depends on what you want to do, but uh, we think, and it's also fairly light. Um, you would think it because it's double, it's actually like a double um, layer, so that's how it actually works. And um, you think it would be heavy, but it's actually not. And the mats, so I started off with a good old piece of grass, um, mm -hmm. artificial turf from Bunnings. You get the $10 blocks, um, and that did us well. It lasted for a long time. I think because we've also got the dog going in and out and in and out and in and out. Um, it just wasn't working as well for us. So we invested it, it, in a thicker pile. It's not like, I think the little piece of grass does the job for like your little mat, but the muck mats and the tidy turf mats and the navigators got them out now as well. They actually absorb the sand in it. And then when you actually take it away, I, I, I shake mine out every day, the amount of sand that comes out of it. So they definitely are better than the little piece of tidy turf that you get. And a lot of people use the, just the turf from BCF and that's up to you, but we use it. You get the one that fits inside the step now, you get different sizes outside. You can put your um, thongs and your shoes on them, um, put a couple of little photos in here, but they do definitely work a bit better. Um, and talking about cooking apparatus, Derek loves a good cooking apparatus and when we left Brisbane um, we had multiple of them. So we left Brisbane with the Weber which we have since changed out for a Z. Bob, Bob's farted. <laughs> wow, if you don't know, the French Bulldogs they've got a Distinct smell, but uh, you mean Bob left Fluffy off the chain? Yeah. All right. So back to the Sorry. the Weber. Um, we had a Weber. We've actually swapped that out for a Ziggy, and there are two reasons for that. The Ziggy lid. Well, with the Weber, we had to take the lid off it to get it into the tunnel mm -hmm. boot, 
and with the ziggy because the lid actually folds all the way back and under. But the old, yeah, sorry, I'm cutting you out again. I'm sorry. No, go, go. This is a debate again. It's the Weber versus the Ziggy. Which is better? We see most people had to have the Weber. We have the Weber. It's got a lot more accessories. Um, our little Nova actually came with the Ziggy built in, and we got rid of the Weber. We thought, well, it's built in, and uh, I can't really tell the difference. It cooks a steak, it cooks a snag, it does everything it's supposed to be, and the lid does fold around. And second, when we built the Vacationer, the Ziggy was actually cheaper than the Weber. That's so, fast. There you go. Here Absolutely. he comes. Um, so we left with the Weber, changed that for a Ziggy. We also left with something called a Scottle. So. Photo. We'll put down yeah photo because it's a, a South African product um, that you can buy in Australia, but it's quite big, it's heavy, <laughs> and it you requires an additional gas bottle, doesn't Correct. it? Correct. Yeah. But I tell you what, in South Africa when we go camping, we we this thing the scottle used to be the first thing you pack in because hmm. it's just something about doing eggs and bacon on it, um, your toast on it, your mushrooms, your tomatoes, your onions, and then everybody comes and you dish up because it's quite a it's quite a big round dish, like about, you know, this, yeah, yeah, big. I have actually seen a, an equivalent one at BCF. I don't know if they still do it, but we set up with this thing as well. So you must probably be thinking, holy moly, where did you pack everything? Well, this is the reason why we <laughs> threw all the stuff out or we dropped it off back at our storage unit. But together with the scuttle, we had the cob. So we had the cob cooking oven. Amazing, amazing piece of apparatus. About this big. About this high and we also had the <laughs> oven buddy which used to fit in the car so the weber the scuttle weber, weber weber the cob and the oven buddy we got rid of all of that and we've replaced it with an air fryer and a small induction cooktop and that is now yep. what we cook on yep smaller so less space and not as heavy but you know don't want to go dive into too much to, to run something like that you do need the power system so if you're just going to be going out on a weekend and you don't have the big lithium power packs like the oven buddy was good it just took longer to cook something that's all I, that's the only reason why we changed it and, and i obviously can do a little bit more inside the induction cook induction oven so i can do like a pork belly i can do it full chicken pizzas i can bake bread i can do all of that with the, the the oven buddy i try to warm up like one of those bought lasagnas when we were on kangaroo island oh getting a bit peckish so i put it in for two hours i'd have to go for another hour just to get it warm um nothing wrong with them and then we actually even bought the little dish that yeah. you could do stews and that in it but it just you know if you were you know like when, when i bought it i thought i, I pictured this like all right three hours before I was getting hungry I'd put it in in it so it could cook while I was driving um, but it isn't a good alternative to the in, in, in the um, in air fryer thing we've got if you don't have the big power system I'd say if you can't get that get the oven buddy but don't get the rest because like you can do quite a bit in the oven buddy I was gonna say don't forget we left with the toaster as well we had a toaster as well the toaster is gone and we just use our grill function um, inside the caravan to make toast. Hema maps. So when we left Brizzy, I bought the Hema HX1. Yep, and that was one of the first things that I got rid of um, because my windscreen started becoming like a bit of a cockpit as well. <laughs> and I just found that, you know, with the camping apps these days, you can actually just click on something hit directions and boom it goes. Now I did a video a while ago about how Google Maps kind of got us off the beaten path a little bit. So that's the downfall of it. So what I did when we were up in Cape York, I actually downloaded the HEMA app on my phone. Now yes, before you go, it was $100. It's not quite the same as the actual HX1 or the HX2 now or whatever you want to call it, but it it does give me some sort of indication so when we were down on the on the southwest when google maps got us lost a little bit like i can pull it up and i can see that the road was gonna eventually get us back somewhere now we use that up in cape york you can still i think you can still even track yourself on the app it's just downloaded pages so i knew i was going to go up to cape york so i downloaded them you know i don't think i paid extra for them and it worked fine like it yeah you're not going to get 
I, I don't know how to, this is why I got rid of the HX1 because I actually didn't, wasn't using it to its full potential. Um, but the app for $100 does the job for us and yeah, so the HEMA maps is gone. So I paid like six, $700 for it. I think I sold it a few months later for $200. So I lost lots of money on that. We also left with a big dog bed. So I'm sure you all know those like metal dog beds or aluminium store. that you get. You can get different sizes. Ours was about, you know, it was the I think it was the large for Sophie. She was a big girl. Um, so that was really awkward to pack well, away and to carry around. Yeah, because it's another thing that had to come into the van. Yeah. And then, I won't, I won't lie to you, you know, we, <laughs> we, we, we put it up against something, you go on the corrugations, it would, it would over. damage yeah. the floor, it would damage the cabinetry, it would yeah. hook into the wall. Um, sorry. Um, yeah, so, and they're quite big. Well, they're not, they're not heavy, but, okay, what, are, what did we um, replace it with? So we replaced it with navigators, stack away or fold away dog bed. Um, yeah. So I'd show you the dog bed, but it's really filthy. So I'm not going to show you the dog bed, and I'll just Derek can drop in a picture. I'll drop another picture in. Like I said, we guys we pay for all the stuff. It's not um, sponsored. It's yeah. just what we found works for us over three and a half years. Yeah. And we've had a lot of people ask us about the dog bed because again, it folds up quite narrow. It's kind of like that high and about that big. So same as a yeah. So I've actually I, share. I've actually just jumped on and ordered ordered another one. Um, they're actually two sizes, but I got the smaller one for Bob because he's not a very big dog. But it's the same size as what we got now, and it actually fits with our chairs in the back thing here, so it's not outside if it's raining, which is great. I've got to show you this. This is probably my favourite purchase. I don't know why, but it's 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 Sue's favourite piece of. Um... I love it. It's my broom. See, hang on. I'll try not to hit anything. So picture a full size broom, but watch this. <laughs> Look at that. This is probably the right eye for you, that one. <laughs> He's holding the broom. And the best thing is it's made out of rubber. So you can actually use it for like, you know, with water if you need to yep. clean something on the car or you know, the boat or if Derek and needs a wash outside. We've, ac we've actually had that broom for a fair I think over oh long time a long time two two plus years two this plus broom. years the old broom and she's still going and I love it so does Bob yeah Bob loves the broom so we'll pack that away before yep. he gets excited all right oh yes here one. we go here we yes, go this thing so <laughs> I thought I was doing so good I went out to a, a camping shop in Brisbane I can't remember what it was it must have been a an anaconda or a tent world or one of them and I bought a the a bin holder so this little little flat top at the bottom and some pieces that you had to put together another photo coming up on the screen <laughs> and you put your bin bag in it outside the caravan and then when you go out you just drop your stuff in because caravans we struggle in this caravan without having somewhere to put the bin that was the first thing I was gone to well <laughs> it, it actually I, it, it, the wind just took it it's, <laughs> it's just not yeah look I don't know the idea is there maybe I was using it wrong but I you mean, know, I suppose you could put a rock at the bottom of it, but no, it's it didn't work for us. So fortunately, that wasn't an wasn't an expensive item to, no. to turf out. And I was going to say, if anyone has a solution to the notorious bin in a caravan outside, please let us know because I know there yeah. are lots of um, different solutions out there, but we find nothing works better for us than a good old plastic clip with a bin bag hooked on it in our back cupboard to keep it out the way. So, here's one of Sue's big one. So, when we left, we thought we'd take the house pots with us. I like my house pots. You bought them for me for Christmas. They were the Jamie Oliver pots. I eventually found some amazing pots on the road that I will share with you. And these were bought in a camping store. They're Anaconda. called- Anaconda. Yeah, Anaconda. They're called Roving. R-O-V-I-N. So I bought the small one and the large one they stack in each other they're fairly light and they've got detachable handles so that's what you're left with along with that get excited about the pots 
it is quite handy, I've got to say. And then, like, with the removable handle, while Sue's picking up the other ones, like when they're on the stove and that, often when we walk past, if the handle's there, you knock it, so you can pop the handle off. So it's also a bit of a safety thing. Um, and no one, and I would think, like, I don't know, we don't have kids, I'm thinking outside the box. You know, if it's on the stove, a little a kid that's just a whole, can always just pull down on a handle and it could pull the whole the hot stuff over. Or you can take the handle off and you can try and keep it um, on the stove without anything hanging off the end of it. The other thing we have is <clears throat> the Weber pot. So this is a small one, you can get a larger one. And essentially, you can either use it as a saucepan pot on top of gas. It also works on induction is it called oh i don't Do know I, I don't know okay scrap that it works on gas and it also goes in the oven like a camp pot as well also removable handle as well but unfortunately those are not they're not the same handle, the same no, handle. but removable handle and um yeah that it's goes on the, obviously, because it's a Weber, it goes on the Weber or the Ziggy. And, and we too. use that and it's non-stick. That one is two and a, oh, three years old that's now. Old. And she's uh, getting on. So it's also on the top of the lid, has a steam and a no steam. But that is definitely, we get asked about that a lot. And um, I think that the small is 120, I think the large is like 140, so. Derek is getting really frustrated because I'm so excited about my kitchen stuff. He thinks it's really boring. So mixing bowls. No, um, I left with a large mixing pole. It was stacker, so I had a large, a medium, a small. It stood about this high. Plastic, not too heavy, but check at this. This is a nest. It's called Pop Up, and you can get it in the camping. A small mixing bowl, a colander or drainer, and a large mixing bowl. And they all stack down. And look how much space they take up. All of them. Incredible. There you go. Then come over here, love. We're not done with the kitchen. I know it's not your, your spot, but you're going to have to swing that camera around. So here is our top drawer with what I would call a standard cutlery tray, which I've managed to borrow from the kind neighbors next door. Here is a cutlery tray that I bought online. Watch this. There you go. There you go. And look at all this additional space for your big knives and your graters and your big serving spoons and that sort of thing. What a space saver versus that. That. I've been dying to share this one. All right, let's go back to the page. It's my one. These are for the fishing enthusiasts. What? Enthusiasts. Enthusiasts. <laughs> Guys, we went off with like nine fishing rods and um, I quickly learned that number one, I can't catch fish. And obviously having all this gear, so nine fishing rods, reels, tackle. Um, we, we narrowed that down to two fishing rods, one for each of us. And we've got one sort of hybrid rod and reel where we can go for a little bit of heavier stuff and it also catches some light stuff so we don't really go on fishing charters because i get seasick so these sort of rods and reels sort of work perfectly for us and a little fishing bag with some bits and pieces in it and um as you know click lures <laughs> and um i bought another two the other day by the way Yes, and I found them in the pantry. Yeah, I, I don't know why, it's just something I do. <laughs> so, I have lost a few, to be fair, and I have tried to replace them as we go down. So, yeah, guys, so we would like just to wrap that up. Uh, you know, what we found when we left on our trip, we were on a very tight budget, and we thought that, like, pots and pans out of the house would work in the van. Yes, they do, but there's a reason why they make stuff for camping oh bob you're right mate um they make stuff for camping overlanding and four by fouring stuff so that it's a little a little bit smaller and, and lighter lighter and with the handles detaching it's great for safety and it's also great for packing 
um, space wise in your pot drawers and cupboards and stuff like that so and we've got a bit of a saying don't we like it really doesn't matter what you do it with as long as you're doing it yeah that's it and also we met some grey nomads before regarding the whole if it can serve two purposes now not everything can serve two purposes but if you can get something that can serve two purposes like that Weber dish is really great we could actually must probably even get rid of the other pots and just use that but we do have enough space and wait for what we've got but just those are the ideas that we've picked up on the road and we take we take note of these things so if you've also got any other tips please drop them in the comments down below because we're learning and if you're happy for us to share that with um, fellow travelers on on sort of uh, YouTube and stuff like that we will but guys yeah from um, us that's it for this uh, episode if you haven't already done so and would like to support us please, please hit the like and subscribe button below. It is actually quite a big part of the YouTube, growing on YouTube is for people to subscribe, especially subscribe, like, and click the notification bell. It's a big part of making episodes and getting you guys to enjoy, uh, well, not getting you to enjoy our content, hoping that you enjoy our content. And just by subscribing, it grows us as a channel and then we reach new viewers. So that's why we ask, you to do that in sort of every episode because it's a very important part of YouTube. But yeah. guys, have a great week from myself, Sue. Like she said, have a great week, and we'll see you in our next episode. Ta da!